the the conversation we're following today is the progress of the garden. It looks like everything has just grown fantastically since the last time we did a video. Um, we were tracking um, kind of the way that the videos can be used as educational tools too for people as well as documentation of what we're doing in terms of urban gardening in Youngstown and the, you know, the larger Occupy project. Um, and what I'd like to do is talk about a little bit what we do with the produce. We haven't touched on that so far this year, you know, and uh, we're, we've been talking about how it, you know, how we get it out of the ground and organize it and, you know, administer it, but we haven't talked about what we do with it. Okay, so Chris, I'm ready to trade line. with you. It's okay. a question. What do we do with the produce? Well, I think the first line is making sure that we eat it. <laughs> yeah. We know that it's great produce. You know, we know how we've how we've grown it. We know where exact we know exactly where it's came from. So I think uh, at least my first um, means of uh, distributing the harvest would be to my own kitchen. I don't think it's selfish. I mean, that would have been my motivation for creating a garden uh, is so that I know that I have good food. So anybody else have any ideas? Yeah, I, I think that um, what we do with the food depends on which bed in the community garden we're talking about or what other gardens and farms we're talking about. Because in the community garden, you, everybody has their individual plot, and that belongs to just them. And then there are other things that are planted in the garden that everybody's welcome to take. Um, there are um, about six raised beds down in the bottom corner that are um, managed by a, a juvenile court worker, and he has a bunch of kids coming in and growing stuff. And um, the plan for that food is for the kids to harvest it and take it home to share with their parents so that organic gardening uh, creates a stream to the parents of uh, kids from juvenile court. And so that's a kind of neat component of it. And that's but directly that, onto the table too. And no, but there's not, this is, well you know the garden's completely non-corporate, mm -hmm. completely. I mean, it's owned by an individual uh, who shall remain nameless. Um, and it's not me. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's like, that's how it goes. Um, yeah, so which bed is it, who gets the food? We, all, we also, Occupy has done a um, Food Not Bombs thing where lots of the food came from uh, the community garden. You may recall because I think you were there for some of it where we had... I do, yes. We, we served <clears throat> soup and salads on the square in Warren and then you guys did some stuff down at the bus station. Why don't you talk about what you did down there with food? Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, we did the Food Not Bombs program. It's been a couple of years now. Um, but yeah, we um, distributed a, a few handbills ahead of time, you know, we advertised that we were going to be there at a certain day, um, and uh, we served, I think, salad and uh, coffee and donuts and pizza. chips and pizza, and uh, <clears throat> we did... Um, I believe that it wasn't harvested or not everything was harvested from the garden but a significant amount of stuff we did through dumpster diving mm -hmm. so we did a little bit of everything to um, create the bottom line of not being low and beholden to any co corporation you know this was all a hundred percent free effort of love uh, you know giving from the heart to the people now that's one of the projects we were talking about revisiting again this yes, year. Yes, that's right. I think that's a really good idea and I I was thinking too after we did our last video that that might go a long way to um, addressing the idea of outreach mm -hmm. because you know the you know I've found that the bottom line is when you have free food people show up. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yes they do, and most of the time they show up when it's prepared, you mm -hmm. know. The, uh, sometimes people don't know what to do with, you know, something like this. You know, they look at the little tomato plant, they, you know, it grows up, it gets red tomatoes on it, but then what do we do? You know, how many tomatoes can you eat raw? Um, and not everybody, you know, has that desire to look at recipes and try to create something really tasty for themselves. 
I get that, you know, but we, uh, we do try to help with that. Um, and one way that we try to help people with the cooking is through our vegetarian group, Vegetarians of the Greater Youngstown area. Mm -hmm. uh, there we, uh, we've been providing recipes for years for folks to uh, take a certain vegetable every month. Uh, like say, take your eggplant, you know, uh, we get a multitude of eggplants in the garden. Here's what you can do with an eggplant. You can slice it, you can make cutlets to make sandwiches, you can make eggplant parm. You can make so many different things out of uh, the lowly little eggplant that comes in that beautiful purple packaging, you know. Uh, but I'm taking up the whole time. Eggplant. I want to, let me give some over to Sean so that he can talk a little bit about uh, you know, food and maybe the Food Not Bombs program. Well, I want to touch on the education part of it more than anything. And, uh, you know, home economics is not taught in schools anymore, is what I'm told. People don't know how to cook, they don't know how to sew. I don't know if they're still doing wood shop and things like that at schools. You know, that's more industrial and fits into more of the uh, corporate stuff than the other does. And, uh, <coughs> at last I knew that in order to learn how to cook you had to go to culinary school. Now there is one school that has a culinary school but it's individual from the different high school. It's an alternate high school. Now um, I'm running into too many people that have no idea what to do with anything that comes out of a garden. All they know is to go and pick up a can of something or or a candy bar or something like that or some kind of uh, processed meat or processed food. And or go through the drive-thru. Or go through <laughs> a drive-thru at the corporate uh, fast food places. So nutrition is very poor in the United States as we all know. Disease is rampant. Um, you know, and the only, only solution that they have is more chemicals. <laughs> mm -hmm. Medical science is chemicals. Right. And uh, yeah, that's the accepted solution. science. Yeah. But there's oh, so much to be learned and hopefully it doesn't get lost, you know, in cultivating and the different herbs and what have you and different uses for the plants. So as part of our Food Not Bombs work later on in the season, maybe we can do like a quick cooking lesson? That would be great. Yeah, that'd be that would be yes. great. Now, hopefully, um, you know, there's a lot of homeless people that used to show up. I don't know if they're still in the area. I haven't heard. You know, we had a tent city at one time, Sean, and I don't the, know what the, kind um, of cooking that was done the, there. The, the area um, at the bus station uh, is a perfect place to do this on a day that the kitchen is not open. Okay. Now, I think it's not open on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So there's a day of the week when we could uh, have a, a breakfast or lunch uh, right there because that's where people are used to getting to to eat in the mornings, and it'd be a perfect place to advertise for mm -hmm. it too. Yeah. Because that's uh, our, it's, our, it's our community kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, um, is the name of the place I think, and um, mm -hmm. so that would work out nicely. If it's anything extra we have from the garden, because. Uh, yeah, I have there a should, <coughs> yeah, there could very well be a lot of extra food here this year. Yeah, I got a portable stove and a portable grill that uh, be yeah. easy to set up. Yeah, you know. I've got stuff. I Randy, have... that's an excellent idea. That, let's yeah. follow that up. Let's do yeah. some research and follow it up. Yeah, I, first to confirm that that's the day they're not open, but I know there is a day they're not. And I would guess Sunday. That would make sense. Okay, Sean, you were saying about nutrition and education. Nutrition, education, uh, just showing people different things, you know. I can go over and pick a, pick a piece of fruit or a piece of, of a certain vegetable and cook it, you know, or put different things together to make them taste good, you know, and it's better than getting something out of a can or out of a fast food restaurant. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> uh, is that you can take a uh, certain hamburger from a fast food place and set it on your counter and come back in a couple of months and it looks the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, that's not normal. <laughs> yeah, not unless it's something you're pickled. Mm -hmm. You can leave that stuff out on the, on the counter forever. Yeah, I, I'm in accord with what Sean's talking about. That's um, basically the standard American 
diet being horrible. And I think what makes sense is for people to eat fruits and vegetables and you know whole grains and not, exactly not, not not eat all the GMO crap that's out mm -hmm. there. Not um, sucking down animals uh, that are not good for them. And right. Other, that people, you know, we've been conned by uh, um, mega agriculture into believing that eggs and meat and dairy and all that crap is good for us, and it's not. Mm -hmm. We know it. The scientific evidence is crystal clear. That's no longer an argument. Um, but that's just how it is. And I think to fight against that, starting at this grassroots level right here, of producing what we say people should eat mm -hmm. and then giving it to them. It's right. so like I went over to the, um, uh, the farmer's market today with a bucket of my um, red raspberries and just went down the sidewalk passing them out to people. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and and uh, one person said, just sell this. And I said, no, we just I just give it away so people know what it is. And I gave away uh, 14 more red raspberry plants mm -hmm. today to somebody else to plant in their garden. And every week I'm going to do that. So we fight this uh, battle against the corporate paradigm and starting at this level, do actions. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of contagious grassroots stuff that they can't stop. <laughs> right, <laughs> they right. Just, they just can't stop me from That's handing right. out my raspberries yeah. That's right. unless they come That's and right. dig them up. But, yeah. you know, but they come back up the next year anyway, mm -hmm. so they're not going to beat us. Yeah, they, perfectly they just can't. legal. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. I have medical raspberries. <laughs> I think we should touch on is the mental health aspect. Now, I'm not a professional in the mental health field, but I think that nutrition has a lot to do with the rise in people with depression and bipolar and psychotic things. Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, they can probably address that more than I can, but. You know, I think it has a lot to do with nutrition. And I, th I know myself, you know, when, you know, a good meal changes my mind about a lot of things. Right, you know? right, absolutely. <laughs> well, guys, we've reached our time today. Again, another fabulous discussion. We'll reconvene in two weeks and follow up with more conversation. More Thanks. On the homeless project. Yes.